Next to a picture of former Thai Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawat, the sign reads Red Shirt Village for Democracy. It's a symbolic gesture, but a powerful one, as Thailand enters the final day of its election campaign. Inside this small village in the northern province of Udon, politics was rarely discussed until the anti-government red shirt movement took root. Now it's a voice that will not be silenced. I want democracy. We are linking hundreds of rural groups together. They are rising up to speak with the same voice. Thailand is split into pro- and anti taxan groups, and the election has more or less become a referendum on whether he should return to the country. His sister Yingluck leads the opposition Pur Thai party, and her support here is almost universal. There's no social justice in Thailand. The government accuses us of being troublemakers and puts us in jail so they can forget about us. This is not fair. The red shirt movement is still preparing for the worst. Per Thai could capture the popular vote, but may lose out if it needs to form a coalition. The villagers are told to use their votes as weapons and not to converge on Bangkok as they did last year, which led to a military crackdown on red shirt protesters. People in the red village say it's also a signal that their votes aren't for sale. Vote buying has been a problem that's long plagued Thai elections, especially in rural areas. The tightly contested province of Khon Ken pits Pur Thai against former coalition party Bum Jai Thai. Many say they've been handed money to vote for Bum Jai Thai after its political rallies. These women say they took the money but will vote Pur Thai instead. They will never win our hearts and minds. It doesn't matter how much they pay, we will take it all, but we will never vote for them. We're smarter now, they say. We understand politics. Ella Callan, Al Jazeera, Northern Thailand.